Okay, so today this truck driver did not want to be filmed by the way, did not want to be on JPay Dirt. So I'm not going to show him, but I'm going to show his truck. He was uh, broke down here with a computer problem, so Pittsburgh Power, since I was only 30 miles away, uh, FedExed me a remote diagnostic unit, which is the laptop and all the stuff that goes with it. And uh, so I came out here and hooked it up for him, and they remote fixed his issue. And he's headed back to Pennsylvania next Tuesday. So he'll take that with him. This is a really awesome truck. Look at that sleeper. It is nice. So anyway, I'm out of here. So it was, it was nice to meet you, Greg. You had a good visit with him. He's uh, from Pennsylvania. So we sat and bullshitted. Asked him if he wanted to be on J Pater. And he was a little camera shy, so he didn't want to do that. He's a he's an owner operator. Does his own thing. I gotta respect uh, truck drivers who can make that work. It's a tough business. Anyway, he was explaining and showing me his uh, electronic logs and how they work. And I, I really wish you could have heard all that because uh, I've learned quite a bit about electronic logs lately. And the one thing that I can tell you is that it's going to force a lot of sleepy truck drivers to be out on the road. Because you only get so many hours and it's not like it used to be. It used to be you could pull off and... You know, if you were sleepy, you could take a nap for a while and then go back at it. Well, not anymore. Because the government has decided that you got a certain amount of time, a certain window, and then you got to be shut down. And so, because of that piss poor system, you got truckers that are going to be out on the road, sleepy, tired, and, uh, you know, everybody's different. One guy might need to stop for an hour and take a nap and he'll be good for another six or seven hours. Other guys might be able to go all day long without a nap. So like Greg said, he's kind of trained himself. He's been doing this for 40 years. He's trained himself uh, to be able to drive for long periods of time. Great big truck driving companies. They're the ones that kill all the people. So instead of making them do this, they're making everybody do it. And it's just a bad deal. It's kind of like if I get a DUI and they say, Jeff, you got to put a, a an ignition interlock, a deal where I have to blow on that before the car will start. Uh, because I got a DUI, they're going to make you get an ignition interlock. It's just, it's stupid. What? Every time the government gets involved in something, they screw it up for everybody. Hey Greg from Pennsylvania, everything okay? You gonna be able to get out of there all right? Yeah, yeah, everything's good. Thank you. Have a safe trip, talk to you later. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. Okay, I got I missed out on this. Jake's got the old one tore out and he's got the new one back in. So what you want to do is before you take your old one out, you want to have your new one. How much was this, Jake? Thousand thousand fifty three dollars for this wiring harness. And they can't even finish protecting these wires on down in here with the so we're going to have to put something over this to protect these wires that are hanging out. But So you got to get everything in there the way it goes from the factory. 
So this must be the cam sensor one. I wonder if we should have bought these too. I'm betting money we should have bought this. Yeah, because they don't, they don't look like they're in that good of shape either. Look at that. So then when you get ready to do this side, you got to take the belt off the AC compressor and this bracket in here on the motor, you got to take the bolts out because you can't get to the temperature sensor on the thermostat housing back in there unless you undo the bolts so you can move this forward to get in there. If we'd have done this when we had all this apart before, it would have been a piece of cake. Okay, so when you plug all this in, what I've done is I've uh, taped this up, the wires so they're not exposed. Taped these up here on the end of the engine. Left Jake with all the shit job up there, putting the tough stuff in. He likes it, don't you? No. No. So anyway, before you tear yours out, you you got two sensors, which is right here. The, the one on the back side, this one here, is your engine oil pressure. You can see the hose that goes into the cab. And this one here is your atmospheric pressure sensor. But as you can see, they're both a triangle-shaped connector. So, so you got to make sure you hook these up right. Um... This one's going to go up here. This is the atmospheric pressure. And then this one hiding back in here. You can't see. It's got a bag on it. Oil pressure. Okay, this is the old harness. And uh, Lauren from Pocatello, was, he called me and we, we were talking about this. And he suggested using uh, silicone in here to seal this because, as you can see, the fluid could run right down into the hole, come out the other side, and then go inside the computer. And I've had people tell me that. Uh, Waltz, W-A-U-L-T-S, Waltz, uh, he's a subscriber to my channel. He's a Caterpillar mechanic. And he told me that when these... Uh, connections into the IVA housing start leaking and 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 mine were if you go back in my previous videos we replaced all that but the oil was just pouring out the back side of these connectors and down into this harness and uh, so that he was saying that can come down in here and get down in here and run in here and then get into your computer now Cummins diesel power said that uh, there's some kind of a compound that you mix up and you can put in here, pour in place to protect all this. I kind of like that. I did not put any silicone in my new one yet. Uh, I'm waiting. I want to do some checking on that compound that you put in there. That would be an awesome fix. Silicone would probably work also. But I, I think the m most important thing is don't steam clean this with a pressure washer. Stay away from these ends with a pressure washer. Uh, you saw I taped these up, these wires up to protect them. The interesting thing about these wiring harnesses, look at this. Look how nice and neat this has been done. All the wires are nice and smooth and together. And then you come over to this side and they're a wound up gob and a mess and uh, I really really wish manufacturers would pay some more attention to that kind of detail and uh, make things nicer it's kind of like if you've ever had the inside dash apart on one of these Kenworths you'll absolutely die at the mess of spaghetti wiring in there and how awful and unkempt it is I, my comment is, is if that was house wiring and the state electrical inspector came to inspect your wiring and he saw a mess like that, there's no way he would approve it. It's just, it's like one big fire hazard in there. 
and that's why we redid all these wires that go over to the alternator and we put all new loom on there and we separated the positive cables from the ground the grounds and the positives are in their own wiring harnesses so that if they rub together or there's a problem they cannot touch the hot ones because if you do that that's a hundred and forty five amp alternator that thing would melt that stuff and cause a fire in there uh, like you can't believe and I always wondered why I see so many of these Kenworth trucks burn to the ground when I was at the junkyard looking for these pipes I can't tell you how many Kenworths and Peterbilts I saw that were just completely burned in the engine compartment and it's got to be from that wiring so if you've got a truck like this uh, and you it's got a lot of time on it this this is the the factory harness stuff protectant that comes from Kenworth and we just replaced it with the same thing but the amount of heat that came off those turbos and that fan you would just grab this stuff and it would disintegrate and it was coming apart and they had the hot cable and the ground cable in the same loom which is just asking for a disaster so we've separated all that we've replaced it clear from the alternator clear across the engine and uh, clear down into here and and clear up into here it's spliced right in there so we got rid of everything clear up into here anything that was junky and bad but I can't afford to have my truck burn down so I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that the wiring harnesses are protected. One more tip of the day to you. If you're going to undo the harness off the computer and work on any of this, uh, undo the electrical connections off your battery.
might be on this job two hours, we might be there two weeks, but in the first couple hours we're going to find out if we can do what the guy wants us to do. Uh, if I have to bring him back uh, home, I will stop and fill it with fuel again and see what kind of mileage, but I'm going to run 65. We're chugging along 60, well, a little bit over, uh, probably 66, 67, turning about 1,700 RPM. But I'll be able to let you know whether or not I get, you know, how much better mileage I get with the single. So we're chugging along and we're running, looks like about, 1100 on the hot side, 830 on the cold side. Only pulling about 20 pounds of boost on the flat. Come to these hills, should poke it right up to 40 psi. going to drive it like I normally do. I run 65 with this excavator on. I gross, I'm grossing 134,000 right now. So I'll run 65. When I come to the hills, it'll be clear to the floor. And that's just how I ran it with the twins. Looks like they're repairing the overpasses that uh, hit with these 336, his rented 336. I thought that was interesting. I got the police report on that. And uh, they lied to the state police about where they were going with that machine. Because I don't know, maybe for insurance purposes, maybe he did it so his insurance would pay for it, but he was hauling that 336 for hire. Uh, it was not his machine. He was hauling for hire. I don't know if he had authority to haul for hire. Anytime people call me and they ask me to move equipment, first thing out of my mouth is I can't do that. I don't have authority. My insurance is not going to cover that, and so I just tell them no. See, now I'm holding my own on this grade. I could run 65 plus. Okay, that worked out pretty good. I walked, uh, it was starting to walk around that guy, but right there at the top, I started losing a little bit of ground, but normally, when I'd pull out before with the twins, hey, no way in hell I was running 65. So, to be honest with you, I think this single setup is possibly making a little bit more power than the twins. So, so far, I'm tickled to death with it, and the balancer is awesome. That obnoxious noise is gone. I know I've said it over and over. I hate to sound like a broken record, but uh, 
Change your balancer if it's a half a million miles old. Change it, change it. Okay, I've had a lot of guys ask me um, what my fuel mileage is with the switchblade. So I don't have a lot of data, but the other day I was able to run a pretty good distance with a pretty good load. So what I did is I went and I loaded the 336 up and I went and got 112.4 gallons and I filled it clear to the top of the uh, filler hole on the tank until it kept spitting out at me. So I filled it as full as I could get it and I ran 56 miles loaded and then it came back empty 56 miles right back to the same place the same route everything that I went loaded and it came back and it took 25.4 gallons to go 56 one way and 56 back so uh, that's gonna be let me see 100 Two carrier three is four, seven, eight, eleven. Yeah, 112 miles. So, <laughs> um, 112 miles and 25.4 gallons of fuel comes out 4.4 miles per gallon. Okay, in previous video, I showed you what my mileage was and generally this is what i got before 3 3.39 4.5 3.5 4 3.89 on the gravel hauls i almost did five miles per gallon so that that was amazing but generally just hauling equipment and then coming back deadheaded and stuff this is the best i can do now I can't tell you, there must have been some gravel hauling in this one to have got up this high, same with this one. But generally when I'm hauling heavy, I'm down in the three, three and a half miles per gallon department. See this one's clear down 3.39. So anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, so over the next several months as I continue to track my fuel mileage, I'll be able to come back and do another average and we'll see where we're at. But so far, I'm tickled to death if I'm going to get a little better mileage. Okay, we're, uh, Matt's gonna try to tear this rock pile down so that we cover it with dirt and then the guy can farm over it. This is what lava rock looks like here. We are picking things up and putting them down.
Hey, got a awesome uh, surprise from Shop Dave down in Kersey, Colorado, and uh, he sent me these cutting blades after he watched me hack that balancer in two with a hacksaw. So, Dave, I love you, man. Thank you for sending this to me. I'm going to try these out. And But before I do, I want to show you what I, I want to do with these. Now, you saw in the video uh, bringing the cat home. And I've got to get it in the shop and get the switchblade on it. But in order to get it in the shop, uh, I've got another one of these tracks off of a quadra track I got to cut off. And so we cut this one off with uh, skinny wheels. So my question is, is will that saw blade, do you think it, if I put that in my Makita, will that cut that in half? Uh, got to get the blade back off the cat and get her in here. But I need, I need to protect the shop floor concrete. I, I really don't want to chew it up with that crawler. So I uh, plan on using truck tires and car tires to get it into the shop. And then where it's going to sit, it'll be sitting on top of those quadra track tracks. So that's what I need to know is can I cut it in half with this? All right. Got a package from Neil Strong down in Golden, Colorado. I assume that's where they make Coors beer, Golden, Colorado. He told me he was going to send me this. This is awesome, Neil. Thank you very much. Holy smokes. Good Lord, Neil. It's a treasure trove. I've hit the jackpot. Sweet. A hat from Wagner. Wagner cat. Oh, awesome. What have we got here? Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Strong's Excavating and Trucking in Gold, Colorado. Those are nice shirts, Neil. That is cool. And that will fit this little... I used to be fat, not fat anymore. Oh, more shirts. Oh, a black one and a gray one. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and this. Okay, now, this is expensive, Neil. I gotta say, this is awesome. I love these O-ring kits that Cat has. Holy cow, look at that. Good Lord, look at all those O-rings. They've never even been opened. Neil, you telling me you don't use these? Holy smokes, that is awesome. I love this. Sweet. Good heavens, Neil. I don't know what to say. I heard you the man. Thank you. Wow. That is cool. That is so cool. Awesome. Neil, that is awesome. That is awesome. Hey everybody, want to introduce you to some of my awesome subscribers and I want to start out with one from Salinas, California. And that's Chris Harney. Uh, says he loves watching my videos, that's awesome Chris. Uh, please share my videos, that really helps me out, helps me do this cool stuff I'm doing. Uh, David Stark from Oxbow Earthworks right here in Blackfoot. Uh, thanks, David, uh, for the generous donation to Shane. He really appreciated that. You are a good man, sir. John Hambrick from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Thank you, John. Uh, Justin Woodley from Seneca, South Carolina. Thanks for subscribing, Justin. And uh, Lauren from Pocatello, Idaho. Appreciated the phone call and your information on the wiring harness. That was fun. Uh, Lockie Raglas from Newcastle, Australia. Thank you, mate, for subscribing. And Gary Oldshack from Nottingham, England. Gary, that's awesome. You live in a, a great place with a, an incredible history. That is cool. 
And Justin Bechtel from Prince George, British Columbia. Love my Canadian subscribers also. Uh, if you haven't seen your name on the board, please submit your name again just in case I forgot you. And I'll get you up on there and we'll see you next week. Hey everybody, check out my e-store. I'll put a link below in the description. Uh, you can get yourself a Jay Pater calendar with my equipment on it or a swimsuit calendar. Awesome. Anyway, for those of you who've already ordered, uh, I've shipped your orders out two days ago, three days ago now, and it will be coming in a priority mailbox. Should be there to you by the time this video comes out, except for the one guy, Stephen Paisley in Canada. I don't know what it is about shipping into Canada, but sometimes it can take a month. It's ridiculous. So. This is what the hats will come in as a box like this, so watch for that. And for those of you who bought, also the calendars are coming with your order, but they'll be shipped in a package like this and they'll be coming first class mail. So it might take a week or so. And to Steve in Canada again, it might take longer than that. I don't know what the deal is there. But anyway, go to the store, get you a hat and get you a calendar. Hey, I want to give a special shout out to Mike Johnson. Uh, thank you very much, Mike, for the article and the link on the torsional dampeners. Uh, I'm going to put that in the description below. Go check that out and read it. You'll get to see what it looks like. Had a lot of people ask me what a new one is supposed to look like. Click on this link and it will show you what it's supposed to look like. Uh, I can't stress enough. Uh, how important it is to change that balancer. I had no idea what was inside of them uh, until Bruce told me that they're good for 500,000 miles. After that, you should replace them. Now, uh, I've had some comments from guys telling me that their cat dealer said, don't worry about it, just run them. I'm sorry, but I gotta disagree with that. That's ignorance. Uh, 500,000 miles, get rid of them. It could save you a crankshaft. Uh, I love mine. It's made a huge difference. Uh, that's no bullshit. Change them. Quote of the day is from Brett Goodman and his father told him this. If you can afford to buy new, buy whatever you want. But if you have to buy used, better buy a cat. Thanks, Brett. The Kenworth is back in here. Uh, I got some cool things I'm going to do on the Kenworth. Okay, one of the things I can tell you I'm going to do is I had a lot of comments about the drive pressure. And there's a lot of misconceptions about the switchblade. And people think that this causes a lot of drive pressure. Well, what's a drive pressure? Well, that's the pressure inside this manifold. Uh, so I want to compare the exhaust pressure inside this manifold against the boost pressure. So here's what I'm going to do. I got a boost gauge. There we go. I got a boost gauge. And so what I'm going to do with this boost gauge is I'm going to take out this pyrometer right here. And I'm going to put copper line in there and I'm going to make a copper coil because I don't want that extreme heat getting into the gauge. So after the copper coil then I'll probably just go some plastic and hook it into the gauge. And what I want to do is set my camera up inside here and I want to mount this gauge in here somewhere so that as I'm driving you can watch this 
uh, the actuator working and you can watch the drive pressure. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I am going to get a couple of weld-in bungs like this and I'm going to put one here. Actually, I might be able to put it right here. So what I want to do is I want to put one of the thermocouples on the pressure side. I want to know what the temperature of this air is uh, leaving the turbocharger. Then I'm going to go on the other side and on the pipe over there I'm going to weld in a bung and I'm going to put the other thermocouple in there. And that's going to show us what the temperature is coming out of the turbo and then how much temperature the after cooler removes. Now one of the things I talked about that I really wanted to do and I'm kicking myself in the ass for not doing it was before I took the twins off I wanted to know what the temperature was coming out of that pre-cooler or before the pre-cooler. Uh, it would have been nice to have known both and then also on the other side what the temperature was. Now I have asked some people on Facebook about that but I've got some crazy answers and so I need a cat technician or somebody who's done this testing or somebody who knows for a fact what that temperature is coming out of those twin turbochargers. It's just cool information and I think a lot of people would like to know it. And so that's what I plan on doing there. But I'm not going to tell you the other deal I'm doing. So you're just going to have to hang on and watch. But I'm going to show it to you. And it should be pretty interesting. And remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. So I'm like